A blast of winter in the weather forecast. How will it affect your Thanksgiving travel? I'll let you know. Three people are expected to recover after a shooting in downtown Salt Lake City last night. I'll show you how people in the area are reacting to the gunfire. A scare at Vivint Smart Home Arena puts people on edge right after a Utah Jazz game. It's very fortunate that this happened at the end of the game. Those with the arena responding to that incident. And killed in action during World War II. There's never a day that you don't wonder what happened. I'm so grateful for our wonderful country. Today, after more than 75 years, he returns home to Cache County for a final goodbye. Our top story tonight is the weather. Now it's calm right now, but come Thanksgiving week, it's going to be a whole different story. That storm system you see there is coming right our way. So what should you expect as you get ready to hit the road in just a couple days? Of course, just in time for Thanksgiving. Well, let's check in with meteorologist Breck Bolton. Breck, what do you see? Well, you mentioned it's calm out there. We could definitely say it's the calm before the storm. Yeah, the storm lining up, pushing on the Pacific Northwest. We actually have a series of storms we're going to be talking about throughout the newscast as we're looking at snow across the state, even for the valleys. Let's focus in on what's going on right now. It is calm, mostly clear skies. We're going to keep it clear overnight. We're already down into the 30s, close to 20 uh, degrees in Ogden right now at 30 degrees, where winds are fairly light. Now today, high temperatures above normal. We got up into the mid 40s in Ogden, close to 50 degrees in Salt Lake City, topping off at 44 degrees in Provo, 50 in Moab, 57 in St. George. As we look at the satellite radar, again, nothing really going on except a few high clouds rolling through southwestern uh, Wyoming into northeastern Utah. But again, we're going to be looking at mostly clear skies. This is the cold front we're targeting for Monday. It's really going to be changing things up early Monday morning. So we're going to be talking about both your Monday and uh, morning and afternoon commute. National Weather Service already issuing winter storm watches in effect for the mountains of northern Utah. That'll be in effect through Tuesday. That's the first storm that we need to talk about. There's another one that will be impacting your Thanksgiving travel plans. We'll talk about it, what you could expect, how much snow we're going to get, and are there any windows that would be good to travel in? We'll let you know coming up in just a bit. All right, thank you, Brack. Tonight, Salt Lake City Police searching for whoever is responsible for injuring three people in a drive-by shooting last night. It happened near the complex music venue in downtown Salt Lake, and that's where we find Fox 13's Sydney Glenn. Salt Lake City Police say the shooting may be gang related. They say the victims were walking out of a concert here when an argument erupted on the sidewalk and then shots were fired. There is another concert happening here again tonight, but concert goers say this violence isn't keeping them away. Near a popular music venue, Any unit involved in the of a police say shots were fired. It's scary and it's scary to think about. Mia Kudimi works at the complex. The music venue police say the victims were walking out of when the shooting started. I was kind of worried about all my coworkers, um, but the first things that I heard was that it was outside and it wasn't inside and that was very calming. A spokesperson for the complex says the shooting took place off their property, but did go on to say that they take security very seriously, something Mia echoed. We do pat downs, we do metal wands. Um, we, everyone on our staff, make sure we do at least like an eye check. The chaos Friday night didn't seem to bother many people awaiting a concert Saturday night at the complex. Lyle Tripp said it's simply a different night, different performer. It was a different concert than what it is tonight. Most people I talked to did say it's a good area, not one filled with violence. It's not normal. It's just out of place. But no one seemed to be too worried. Not a nervous person. I've been around guns my whole life. For Mia, though, it serves as a reminder. You can never be too careful. I think after this, we're probably going to make sure that everyone is not alone as they walk home or to their car or wherever they're going. Salt Lake City police say all three victims are expected to recover. Of course, we're going to continue to follow this story as police release more information. In downtown Salt Lake City, Sydney Glenn, Fox 13 News, Utah. And another incident in downtown Salt Lake that put people on edge was the evacuation of Vivint Smart Home Arena after last night's jazz game. Police say shortly after the game, they were alerted to a suspicious package inside the arena. Investigators say a bomb sniffing dog was brought in and got a hit on the box. Per protocol, the arena was evacuated, but just before midnight, a bomb squad cleared the area 
and determined that that suspicious item was a toolbox. I believe the arena uh, management it's looking through the video surveillance and they it's up to them what they what they need, they're going to do from here on now. But I believe they have someone that they saw someone put in the toolbox and they may may not try and get a hold of them, but I don't know. Police say it's fortunate this happened at the end of the game because everyone was already leaving. They also say incidents like this are good opportunities for bomb, bomb technicians and officers to practice their procedures. The Vivint Smart Home Arena issued a statement saying in part, guest safety is the top priority at Vivint Smart Home Arena. We would like to thank fans for their attention and cooperation, as well as the Salt Lake City Police Department for their responsiveness and partnership. A four-year-old boy hit and killed by a drunk driver in Salt Lake City last week has been laid to rest. The family of Holden Curtis shared this photo today on their GoFundMe page. Holden was riding his bicycle alongside his, rather walking his bicycle alongside his mother in a crosswalk on California Avenue when 56-year-old Carl Wayne Johnson ran them over. Johnson faces automobile homicide and DUI charges. The GoFundMe for Holden's family has raised over $21,000 towards its $25,000 goal. You can find the link to it on our website. Three people are dead after an early morning crash in Millard County. The Utah Department of Public Safety says that this happened around 6 this morning on I-15 near milepost 143. DPS says a tan Ford Ranger that you see here went off the left side of the road at a curve and rolled over. The driver and one of the passengers were a mother and her teen daughter from Las Vegas while the third person inside was a woman from Bountiful. The daughter was thrown through the rear window of the vehicle. She was not wearing her seatbelt. A man is behind bars after threatening his Uber driver in an apparent carjacking in West Valley City overnight. This happened on the 3800 block of West Christopherson Drive. Police say Dyson Gorman was taking an Uber when he told the driver he had a gun and that the driver needed to get out of the car. Officers ended up firing pepper balls at the vehicle and eventually used a canine officer to take Gorman into custody. Gorman told police he was drunk and he didn't remember anything that happened. The state's top appeals court has upheld the use of stop and frisk. This is a controversial police practice. In this case, the court heard an appeal by a white supremacist gang member who was stopped last year and searched. Police found drugs and a knife on him. Bryant Robert Mitchell argued the search violated his Fourth Amendment right. Now, the court acknowledged he was cooperative and he did nothing to act as if he would use that weapon, but it ruled that given Mitchell's gang affiliation, the circumstances of the traffic stop and other factors, police were justified. A tech sergeant with the U.S. Army Air Forces was laid to rest this afternoon in Lewiston. Max W. Lauer was the radio operator on a B-24 Liberator that was shot down over Romania during the largest bombing mission of World War II. Fox 13's Adam Herbetz was at today's ceremony. Tech Sergeant Max Lauer was 23 years old. Such a long time ago. When he promised his family and his sister. Oh, say can you see by the thoughts of Levi. Just one more mission until he can come home. There's never a day that you don't wonder what happened. It may have taken 77 years, but now they are back together in the same city, Lewiston, Utah, where she grew up with her older brother. It's a very heartwarming thing and to know that I just thought when I came in I thought who would have ever guessed that he would have come back to this type of hero's welcome home. There will now be full military honors.
Max Lauer was a radio operator, one of 660 air crew members who died in Romania during Operation Tidal Wave, the largest bombing mission of World War II. I'm so grateful for everyone's help. I'm so grateful for our wonderful country. His family says they feel lucky. Advances in DNA technology gave him a chance to reunite with his little sister for the first time since she was a 14-year-old girl. Truly families are meant to be together forever. Reporting in Lewiston, Adam Herbetz, Fox 13 News, Utah. Beautiful story. Still to come, a popular street in Logan is getting a facelift. We'll tell you when Center Street is expected to reopen. And we'll take you inside Pompeii, the newest exhibit inside of the Leonardo Museum. Center Street in downtown Logan between Main Street and 100 West has been closed for months, but now it's receiving the finishing touches on renovations. Today, crews hung up the lettering on this big Center Street sign up over the arches over the street, one of the last parts of the project. Businesses in that area say they've been struggling to get by, but they've been working with the city to rent, figure out when the best time to renovate the street is so it doesn't get in the way of daily business. Now they say their patience all this time is paying off. It's going to be so nice. I mean, extra landscaping, extra trees, didn't lose any parking, more walkable for our customers, lots of great restaurants and places to just hang out. It's, it's, it's just going to be a, a great place to be. The city of Logan says Center Street isn't open yet, but city crews hope it will be back open next week, just in time for Black Friday. More than 1,200 people put on their capes to help Thanksgiving heroes. As a young boy, Rob Adams, the founder of Thanksgiving Heroes, experienced what it was like to go hungry during the holidays. After benefiting from a stranger's act of kindness as a child, Adams decided he needed to pay it forward. His group has fed more than 2,500 families this year alone. Adams says creating that connection between volunteers and families in need has a been a big part of this group's mission for the last five years. These people who were maybe hopeless a few minutes ago now feel like someone cares about their family, someone's thinking about them. That's the kind of hope that, that I'm hoping to create with Thanksgiving's Heroes. It is too late to sign up to volunteer this year, but if you are interested in being a part of Thanksgiving Heroes, head over to our website, fox13now.com. Today, the Leonardo Museum unveiled their new exhibit, Pompeii. The ancient Roman city was buried, or rather, yeah, buried in the first century AD after Mount Vesuvius erupted. In this immersive exhibit, guests can experience everyday life in Pompeii through countless artifacts frozen in time by the volcano. And thanks to modern technology, Pompeii continues to be the most active dig site, providing Utahns with an accurate depiction of life in the first century. It was discovered in the 18th century. It is still being excavated as we speak. So what we're bringing to people is everything that we know about Pompeii from right now, but that could change in two weeks, two months, two years. Pompeii, the exhibition, is expected to remain open until May 3rd of 2020. Tickets start at $25 for adults, $20 for kids, $22 for seniors and military with valid ID. They can be bought online or at the Leonardo box office. Hundreds of people in Murray helped pets find their forever homes for the Humane Society of Utah's third annual Fall in Love Adoption Special. The Humane Society held this event right by the holidays because they wanted to make sure each pet has someone to share the holidays with. They also waived all adoption fees today and because of that, 163 pets have a place to call home. For more information on how to adopt a pet, be sure to catch our Pet of the Week segments right here on Fox 13 News or head over to our website fox13now.com. Pet of the week is tough for me because I want to steal them. <laughs> you do, for sure. <laughs> well, we talked about being generous during the holidays as we're moving towards, of course, the Thanksgiving holiday, but Mother Nature is thinking it's Christmas because what we're bringing into the forecast is just a burst of winter here for the upcoming week. Currently we're at 37 degrees in Salt Lake City. A few high clouds around, winds light. It's going to be a nice evening, chilly as we're going to be dipping down into the 20s across most Wasatch Front locations. Here's your headlines, though. We get one more day with fall weather. Temperatures above normal. We get to see some sunshine, at least to start off your Sunday. We start seeing some clouds tomorrow evening, 
And then once we reach Monday morning, we're looking at season changing storms. And we've got a series of storms throughout the whole week. It is going to be treacherous for your travel here statewide in preparation for Thanksgiving, trying to find some small windows of time where it might be safe to do some traveling, but it is difficult for sure as we're going to keep active weather going. Now, National Weather Service, as I mentioned earlier, issuing a winter storm watch that will be in effect through Tuesday afternoon. Now, this will be changed probably tomorrow, more of an advisory or a warning. And right now the focus is for the mountains of northern Utah as we have our first storm that's going to be hitting early Monday morning. Now how much snow are we going to get? Let's focus in on the mountains. Now my models only show out 48 hours, but this storm will go through Tuesday. So up until 9 o'clock on Monday, this is what we'll be looking for the mountains. Anywhere from 2 to 6 inches, but as the snow will continue on through Tuesday, Areas such as Snowbird could be looking at a foot to a foot and a half of snow and up in Park City, potentially six to eight inches over that 48 period from Monday through Tuesday. Now what we're looking at for the valleys, not as much, but expecting to find snow accumulations again for most spots across northern Utah, one to two inches in Logan, as well as in Salt Lake City, two to three inches in Tooele three to six inches for Park City. Again, these uh, numbers potentially could be updated. And this is the first storm that we're talking about. It hits Monday early, lingering on into Tuesday. Now, right now, it's calm across the state. Some high clouds through southwest Wyoming go, spilling over into northeastern Utah, but a clear sky for tonight and waking up with sunny conditions. Cold front begins to line up. It sweeps through initially with some cooler air tomorrow afternoon, but the moisture is lagging behind. Let's time it all out for you. Here are our computer models. There's the clock here for this evening. Tomorrow morning, again, waking up to mostly clear skies across the state. Some clouds in the afternoon. Snow gets going, though, Monday morning early for your Monday morning commute from northern Utah, especially through the canyons. It's going to be tough. And in the afternoon, snow showers push through central Utah into southern Utah as well. It's all blue. That's snow. And again, that's our first storm. So another storm behind it will keep roads wet and snowy Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe tapering off Saturday. So we've got those big changes for sure. Partly cloudy skies tomorrow for the north south clear. We're going to be looking at temperatures maybe a degree or two uh, warmer than what we found uh, today. Southern Utah, you get the rain Tuesday, but then it looks like a mixture of rain and snow Wednesday, Thursday, some rain snow for the Dixie area Friday and Saturday as temperatures drop down into the 30s. Northern Utah, it's 40s, then 30s. It's snow Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and temperatures only in the 20s next weekend. So it's going to be tough out there. Give yourself plenty of time and maybe limit your travel as it will be treacherous. Good advice. Thanks, Breck. Still ahead, see how local high school students learned how to become the scientists of tomorrow at the University of Utah. This is Fox 13 News. Welcome back. Today, hundreds of high school students got a glimpse into their future. They attended Engineering Day at the University of Utah. Fox 13's John Franke shows us how this firsthand look at college life helps develop the engineers of tomorrow. It's a great recruiting tool for us, for students to really learn about the different types of engineering. Electrical, computer, mechanical, bionic. Those were just some of the engineering specialties these high school students were able to sample. High school students don't have a great understanding about the different types of engineering, so they can really learn and understand that. For many of these high schoolers, while it still may be years away, college is already on their minds. They received a crash course in what the University of Utah has to offer. I just was really, uh, really wanted to learn more about the engineering field and figure out exactly what I wanted to know, like, and figure out what I wanted path I wanted to be on. Andrew was one of the students who took part in labs, lectures, and demonstrations. He hopes to attend the U after high school and is seriously considering engineering. I like to figure out how things work, and I've taken a few engineering classes in the past and really have been excited about the material. The event, now in its 12th year, gives students like Andrew a better understanding of the engineering field. The university hopes it prepares them to make well-informed decisions that will impact their studies and eventually their careers. Engineering is the future. It just keeps growing because that's where the jobs are and also what salaries are today. More than 700 people attended this year's event, some coming from as far away as Alabama. At the U, John Franke, Fox 13 News, Utah.
A year after a popular documentary on Fred Rogers, a feature film starring Tom Hanks is now at the movies. Yeah, it's called A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, and Steve Oldfield says it's one of the best of the year. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. I loved a beautiful day in the neighborhood, even though I was really surprised that Mr. Rogers is only in the movie about 40% of the time. It's more about a jerk of a journalist who's assigned to profile the beloved children's program host and starts out looking for dirt. At the time, I was really going to the dark side on stories, and somebody at the magazine thought it would be really kind of funny having me doing a story on Fred Rogers. 400 words, play nice. Tom was going through anything that a man goes through, you know, family and health and career, but became face up against Fred Rogers, who had a mission to engender understanding and kindness. You love people like me. What are people like you? Broken people. I don't think you were broken. I thought that I was the hunter, he was the game. The amazing thing about it, of course, was <laughs> Fred wasn't having any of that. He had that amazing gift of looking at a person and seeing what that person needed. And that person in this particular case was me. Sometimes we have to ask for help, and that's okay. It ended up changing his life. It wasn't that Fred taught him to not go after things with journalistic integrity. It was that he taught him to see the world through a slightly kinder lens. The movie will no doubt make my top 10 of the year. But don't take my word for it. The most important review comes from Mr. Rogers' widow. He looks adorable as Fred. He looks wonderful. Steve Oldfield, Fox 13 News, Utah. Time for this week's Car Critic. Auto show season starts this weekend in Los Angeles. These shows let you see new cars that might be coming your way and some that are just for show. Fox 13's Brian Champagne splits them up into yes, no, and maybe so. The 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime is a yes due out this summer. Toyota says batteries you can charge at home get at zero to 60 in less than six seconds, and it remembers where the stoplights and hills are to maximize the hybrid functions. The 2020 Nissan Sentra is a yes, coming out in late January. Nissan says it has a slightly bigger, more efficient engine and more safety features. The Buick Encore GX gets a 1.2 or three liter engine, due out late January. Mazda says their 2020 CX-30 is a human-centric yes. You can order an all-electric Audi e-tron Sportback at the end of this month and wait about nine months for it, but you'll only wait 30 minutes to charge it. You can order a Mustang Mach-E now and wait till the end of 2020 for it. Ford says the all-electric will be quick, but we're hearing mixed reviews on calling it a Mustang. Mercedes gets into all-electric with the EQC on sale early next year. The Yes Audi RS Q8 claims to be the world's fastest SUV around the Nürburgring track in Germany. The Vision Mercedes Simplex is a no, but it's a fun early race car homage exercise. And the VW Vision is a maybe. It claims 300 miles of electric range, 0 to 60 in 5 seconds, and lots of luxury. Though it is just a concept, VW has a way of bringing at least parts of their concepts to the street. Brian Champagne, Fox 13's Car Critic. Well, a couple of college football games in progress right now. Yeah, before we get to everything, let's give some score updates. How about that? Utah leading Arizona 14-0. Boise State leading Utah State. Just the second quarter. 28-7. Let's yeah. hope the Aggies can rally. Now to the Jazz. Donovan Mitchell played great tonight against the Pelicans. So did the entire team in the first quarter. Mitchell for three. The Jazz started the game on a 14-0 run. Then check out the pass from Mitchell. Off the rebound to Boyan Bogdanovich. Two of his 28 points. Here's another look at the pass. Right on the mark to Bogey. Here's another good assist. Joe Ingles with the alley-oop. Mitchell. Elevates and throws it down. We have to see that one once again. Great lead pass from Joe in spite of Mitchell doing what he does. He led the Jazz with 37 points. The Jazz beat the Pelicans 28-20 to improve to 11-5. College football now. BYU went after their fifth win in a row today on the road against UMass. Zach Wilson had a big day. Dumps it off to Tyler Algier. Slips by the defenders down the sidelines. 57 yards for the touchdown. BYU up seven to nothing. 
Cougars then scored 42 points in the second quarter. Wilson to Talon Shumway, 48-yard strike for the touchdown. Wilson passed for 293 yards and four touchdowns. Here's another one to Lopini Katoa, who had two touchdowns against the Minutemen. And how about Jackson McChesney? Rushed for 228 yards on just 15 carries, two touchdowns as well. BYU led it 49 to nothing at the half and went on to win it 56-24 to improve to seven and four. Weber State took on Idaho State in their final game of the regular season. How about the trick play? Back to Jake Constantine, and he finds Devin Cooley. Wide open, 38-yard touchdown, 14-0 Wildcats. Later in the second quarter, Josh Davis finds a seam, 25 yards to the end zone. 24-0 Wildcats. Constantine threw for 289 yards, four touchdowns. The final one to Tyler McPherson. Weber State won at 38-10. They're 9-3, and, and co Big Sky champions at 7-1. and one. Playoff seedings are announced tomorrow. And congratulations to the BYU cross-country team. The men won the national championship today in Indiana. It's the first national title in program history. Connor Mance there finished third. He's an All-American along with Danny Carney and Jacob Heslington. The BYU women finished second losing by just six points to Arkansas. They also have three All-Americans in Courtney Weymouth was fifth, Erica Burke Jarvis was sixth, and Whitney Orton was seventh. Pretty impressive day for the Cougars. Putting on a show on the yeah. big stage. Thanks for watching. Quick Cast is coming up next.